Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to AM Casa. Today I'm here in Paris with a friend, and today we're gonna talk about a collection of World Timer watches. Thomas, thank you for being here with me. It's a pleasure to have you here. Minute de voyage, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, it's correct. And you collect watches, but not only, right? I collect watches, but not only world time watches. Okay. I would say. Okay. I begin. I began with uh, GMT, and then uh, I focus on uh, world time watches mainly. Okay, so amazing. It's a, pleasure, it's a pleasure for me to have you here in Paris. Pleasure is mine. Beautiful My hometown. City. Beautiful city. Beautiful city, really. And Minute de Voyage, you were telling me before, it's not only about the watches, but it's also about, again, memories. And, uh, minute de, yes, because Minute de Voyage means uh, like telling a short story, so uh, like to summarize the journey across uh, how is it to collect world time watches, how to collect data, how to meet friends, people, of course. and sometimes how to own watches, of world time watches. Also, also. So tell me, when did you become a watch collector? How did your passion start and why world timers? I think at the beginning, like every like everybody, I had interest in watches when I was like a kid with you know flick flack. I of still course, have my of uh, Formula One flick flack. Flick uh, flack is the thing. <laughs> red watch, but I mean, I have always I have story like at every uh, every age I, I had a watch. But uh, I think I started to to be like more focused and to have some documentation to be on forum, etc. Etc. When I was uh, like 18, 18 or so, okay. I was studying like a lot. So the only one or two hours I had a day to uh, like to rest was uh, about watches, and uh, and uh, and so I, I started to to buy and to collect. At the beginning, it was GMT watches, like the first, like the first serious watch I had is a GLC, like okay. a master, master, uh, yeah. you know. When you see it like today, it's like a regular watch, normal watch. But I mean, this is the most significant watch in my collection because this is the first one. I bought it with my mother. And I, I mean, this is maybe the, the only watch I will not sell until the end of my of course. till the end of my journey. But voila, it, it it began with the with this watch. And then I grew uh, up in the passion of uh, GMT and then World Time. And, uh, Do you travel a lot? I used to because uh, my father was a flight attendant, so uh, okay. I used to to travel uh, like quite a bit. So I have always been interested in watches, of course, but also in the field in the field of uh, like traveling and what is uh, behind this, you know, luggages, etc., etc. So and GMTs are really about that. And GMTs are all about that. flights are the bread and butter yes. for GMTs, so it's really fun. it is. And when did you buy your first world timer? Which one was it? Do you remember? Ooh. It's uh, it's not far from here. I think the first world time I got was a Patek Philippe uh, 1510 uh, in uh, yellow gold. I got it at auction, and okay. that was like my first, let's say, big watch. You know, big brand Patek of Philippe, etc. And uh, when I had it, I said, "Okay, I killed the game." I was like. 20, <laughs> 25 or so. Yeah, that's going hey, to be my, my last one. I mean, for me, the prices were like crazy. I mean, uh, I'm going to get killed. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> by uh, whatever girlfriend I, I, I had uh, at the period. And I say, okay, I killed the game. I have a Patek Philippe, and that's all. And then, you know, the journey continues. Uh, you get old, you get some money from uh, from your work, etc., etc. And, and the story goes on. And you, nowadays, you brought us three watches plus the one on your wrist. Yep. But I do remember you from a, I don't know if we're, we can tell the story, but mm -hmm. an auction room. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing a watch and I remember that in the end, I think you got it. And then I saw the watch on your wrist. Is it the watch you have here, the Agassi? Yes, I have it. I think I saw you with this watch at Philips in yeah. Geneva like three years ago. Yes, maybe. Where is it from? It's an amazing watch. Maybe we can begin with that, of course. Thank you, if you like to, otherwise yes. you let me know. 
yes, yes, yes. Because I see, I see we have something that's similar to what you bought back then, but not really. This one is actually interesting. So this is an Agassiz from the late 40s. Oh, it's beautiful. Let me just adjust it to have like the pleasure to see the, the cotillons in the <laughs> in full. And so that's a, actually what is interesting about uh, about Agassiz and about uh, about this watch is like you have like a Patek Philippe 1415, uh, but indeed for like a cheaper fraction, price, yes, Fra a fraction, fraction of, of the price. price. Fraction of the price, but the quality, if it's you find same. a good one, I mean, it's the same because it's a, it's a, Wenger, a Wenger case. It's a stern dial. It's made by Cotier, so it means that the, the ends are handmade by Louis Cotier, etc. Okay. Et this one has the particularity of, uh, of being uh, an early Cotier, meaning like, you know, the, the very first Cotier was like in the 30s, in the 1930s. And so this is 19. 40s and you have the hand engraved moon and sun which give like uh, even more good appeal of the of the watch and so uh, and so yes it is rose gold case A rose gold case amazing uh, lugs amazing lugs actually agassiz was like a sub brand of longing okay. at, the, at the time okay the pass is really complicated but to 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 short the story a bit, uh, it was ordered by uh, Agassiz, by the Whitnower, which was like, you know, the, mm -hmm. like the, 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 the reporter uh, for, for yes. Longines, etc. Et, et voilà. And, uh, and uh, so they ordered, actually, the, the, the second uh, bigger um, uh, production of, uh, of Ricotier after uh, Patek Philippe. So it's not like a niche for wow. Ricotier, it's like the, wow. the, the, the second bigger. Them? Uh, I guess in I mean, I, I mean, this one, not many because they were almost unique in terms of the case of the of the of the watch. If, if you look at uh, every Agassiz on the on the web, you, you can find sometimes uh, you can have like the regular case, like the 1415, with you know the the teardrop lugs. Star. But this one, when you face it, you say, okay, it could uh, looks like another one. But you, when you look yeah, on the one. side of it, it's not the same. So sometimes it's more curved, sometimes it's like a stick, etc., etc. So like this one in yellow gold, uh, I know one or another with with, uh, but uh, it has like a, it's a gem set, but like okay. a old style uh, old style gem set. And I see it was sold by Bonhams. Uh, Do like, you know uh, where it is? I don't know where it is now, uh, but uh, I have like uh, I have it? the track. Uh, Would you like to get one? Maybe you can live with one. Uh -huh. no, I have a I have other target, so I mean okay. for Agassiz, I think okay. this one is is quite good for Agassiz. Okay, I'm so, interested. Uh, I, I have a other target for in terms of Cotier watches, but uh, for, and yeah. For the record, to remember every one of you, Louis Cotier is the inventor of the of this. We can say he's the inventor of the world timer, more or less, right? We can say that he's like the guy who brought it to the general scene and say, okay, and then he has his time, but it, he was not the inventor of the complication because uh, he's actually. He perfected it for. for... Perfected it, uh, simplified yeah. He also simplified, simplified the, the stuff because he, he was the first to get it implemented, you know, after the uh, Washington Treaty, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. rationalizing, rationalizing every time zone, etc., etc. But there, there was uh, watches uh, uh, from the century uh, before uh, with world time complication, meaning like a lot of uh, time zone uh, showing on the True. dial, pocket watches. Uh, Cool. And if I remember correctly, he's the guy that made it just with one crown and that's it, right? At the beginning, the yeah, patent, yeah, that, that, the, that the, the, the simplification yeah. is that uh, with uh, with one crown, with uh, with uh, diurnal uh, mm -hmm. uh, twenty four hour mm -hmm. ring. So it's 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 more the legibility is is, is like a, is better. So yes. This is an amazing watch, and you're showing yes. me that you don't really collect watches from a precise era. No, you you go from uh, left to right, but all in a in the same path. How do you select the watches you get? It has to speak to you. Of you course, 
It's like a person. So when, when you meet somebody and you say, okay, I think I, like I, think, it, I, think yeah. I like it. I think he, he can become a friend. Mm -hmm. It's the same with the watch. When you look at the watch and you see, I mean, always it's like uh, everybody says that but the condition for a vintage watch, when the condition the is not good. The watch from the 40s is yeah, incredible. Yeah. And uh, when the condition you. is right, I mean, the watch is very appealing, but it has to bring something to the table, you know? It has to have like an history with him. And uh, with that, you have the history. Agassi is, is not a famous brand now, but it's, a, it's like a big name because it's associated with Longines. Uh, like I said, it's the second biggest importer of, of, of Louis Gautier watches, etc. So that's interesting. And uh, yeah, you and get the quality, this the is quality, exactly. yeah. quality is really. Can we say quality is like cornerstone of your collection? I like, try. Again, like, not like everyone does, huh? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't really think Actually, everyone. My collection is quite narrow okay. because uh, I'm trying to be very focused to get like the best I can have for you know the money you right. want to put of in course. it. But uh, that's the way. I have, let's say, less than ten watches because I I want to stay. Uh, Focus. So I prefer I prefer to elevate the the collection and not uh, scrolling everybody every. I know. Everywhere. Otherwise, you buy everything and yeah. you end up with nothing. And you know, I love watches, so I I could buy them all. I, I, I know. I love every watches, but in the end, I know you have to be a bit focused when you don't have like unlimited resources, and so it's it's more pleasant to uh, yeah. I get that, but I think you're doing a great job. What's the next one you wanna? Bring to our attention. Ah, maybe we can, uh, maybe we can keep on the like the vintage stuff with another interesting watch. One of the most underrated, I would say. It's not really it in terms of prices. Maybe it's already something high for the brand, but yeah, still, for the brand, maybe. Yeah, uh, for the brand, maybe. It's an incredible watch, and I think very few people understand that. I think so. This is an interesting watch and actually also an interesting story. This is a Tissot Navigator, like the first iteration of the Tissot Navigator, so early 50s. So competing with Le Cotier, because Le Cotier died in, if I'm not mistaken, in 1966. Okay. Uh, so there is a clear competition between the Ricotier and, and Tissot and the story behind it is so, it's also very interesting because Tissot, when they advertise the watch, they say, forgive me, it's not the exact sentence, but on the ads, they say it's like the first uh, uh, world time watch. You can see all the time zone at a glance, etc., etc. And they say automatic world time watches. And, Tiss and uh, Louis Cotier actually, tried to sue Tissot for this and saying, you can't say uh, you invented the complication, etc., because I did it before you. And so he has the backup of Patek Philippe at the time, when, uh, with the lawyer of Patek Philippe, etc., suing Tissot. And when you look at the archives of uh, Louis Cotier in, uh, in the Geneva Museum, you see the, all the letters in between. Uh, Where is the archive uh, now? In Geneva? But who was it? I never heard of the archive of Louis Cotier. This is something new you're bringing me. The, the, the archive of Louis Cotier, actually, it's a, it's a public record. Uh, you okay. know, uh, the archives of Louis Cotier are now in the, uh, in the, in the Geneva Museum. It's called the Musée d'Art et d'Histoire mm -hmm. de la Ville de Genève. Okay. And uh, it has been, I think, donated by the family of, uh, of Louis Cotier like the son or grandson, I think. They also have watches. They had like the first uh, Louis Cotier watches, the Bazinger. Wow. I don't even know if they display it, but they have it. Uh, and there is also a story, like a, a side story, because part of the archives, I don't know if it's like copied, uh, the exact, etc., has been also sold by uh, Anticorum in okay. 2002, I think. Wow, who knows about it, you know? No, yeah. Yeah, but we cannot tell. Okay, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Special so, watch. And yeah, yeah. So that's, in, it, that's an interesting take on the world time watches because it's not the, it's a radial mm -hmm. uh, way to express the city ring. So it, it's, it's like more shiny, more sculptural. I think it has less legibility. Much than a less. Watch. Much less, but 
let's say it's artistic. And it looks okay. like a bit more like a normal watch somehow. You have yeah. the pusher, so it's diff it's at the pusher, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a pusher. It's different, but it's more like your usual round watch. It's yeah. less visible, I think, than uh, yeah. uh, the other world timers. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. but that's uh, an another take to the to the complication, and I mean, also condition is. Good condition, and you know when you collect world time watches, you also you have to like okay to travel, you have to to like cities, etc. But it's also like geopolitical because you know it's a, the city ring. Who chooses what city represents each time zone, and even now, it's political. I mean, when Patek decided to go from Hong Kong to Pekin. Okay. Mm -hmm. I suppose there is a guy in a room yeah, <laughs> saying course. what is our, what is our interest and of what course. what do we do with it. So since the beginning, when you look at the cities uh, and uh, what has been chosen for each time zone, it's it's very interesting. For for this one, it's uh, it's like the very first badge, very first iteration of uh, of uh, of a Tissot um, a world time. And uh, you can see that they don't even Genre. reunite the, the a two time zone in India. Okay. And just like a few years later, like one or two years later, the two time zone are, are like reunited by a small coma like that, you know. And uh, voila. So that's an, in French, anecdote, and mm -hmm. actually, you know, a side story of the, of the watch, but you, you have a lot. So, uh, and you have Geneva on it, no Paris, no, no Milan. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry yeah, for yeah, this. Yeah. But, still... but for every time zone, you can have a story. You have a story for Paris uh, in the same time zone as London, you know, after the World War II, etc., etc. For, for every time zone. And you can actually learn some geographical uh, <laughs> stuff true. looking That's at it, like true. with, with cities here. Uh, in Canada, uh, Yukon or Claudinki, etc., etc. I mean, even me, uh, I, I do write about it, but sometimes I say, "What's the city? I don't, I don't even know where it is." Well, wow, incredible! Has it any weird cities on it? This one? Because uh, take a look at one. this one, maybe. But ah, this one actually, you can uh, you can think of um, this one know? has Paris. This one has Paris, yes. Of course, <laughs> Leningrad, <laughs> Midway, Midway, Juno, 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 it, okay. Juno it's not, uh, it's not always on the, on, on the, on the city disc, yeah, and, uh, and actually no, it's not. Uh, sometimes it's, a, it's also a matter of, like the, the spelling of the, of the it's, you know, Tokyo here, is an, here is, is interesting, an, huh? is an Y or Hi, etc., etc. Uh, so here is very interesting as well. And you have Leningrad. That's you, can have Le you can have Leningrad, right? That's amazing, Leningrad. And Beautiful. the archive, you, you can also see that uh, Louis Cotier asked uh, Stern, uh, Stern Flair to, uh, to do some modification. Uh, okay. Uh, and I see a lot of culture in how you collect and what you collect, which is really interesting. Do you, where do you learn now? Because before, maybe forums, maybe other people, but nowadays, where do you learn? All about the the connection. I mean, first, the, the museum was a good uh, good, uh, good way. Now I'm tr trying to get uh, good contacts at brands, so I can confirm uh, what I have learned in the archives, etc. Because my quest is uh, in the end, uh, it's a personal quest. I mean, the collection, but it's also more something to to share. Uh, I'm doing a database of every mm -hmm. uh, catalog raisonné, I mean, uh, like uh, every watch that made Louis Cotier, and, okay. uh, and not only Patek Philippe, because you know, across the internet, you see a lot of articles on uh, Louis Cotier watches, but it's always Patek, Patek, Patek because, because Patek... Uh, it's Patek. It's mm -hmm. Patek, mm -hmm. and make a uh, record, uh, record figure, so it's... It's, yes. it, it's it's uh, it's more for the for the audience, but uh, find good information on Agassiz. Find good information on uh, Gollet, who of made like a of few course. watches. I remember when I met you with this one, I was like, this is like I saw the watch and I was like, this ha like this is this is real. This is mm -hmm. cool. This mm -hmm. is not like something that should slip away because again, you look at this and 
at least I see the same quality as Patek as Mercedes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so I don't know how much they are now because they're not easy to source in the market. But I would say how much is a Patek in the same config in a similar configuration? I would say four times the yeah. maybe four times the most so price. That's really, really great value for what you're paying, and uh, and to me it has the same charm, even yeah, if there's course. no Patek on the dial. Of course, I don't need Patek on the dial. I love Patek, eh? don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but again, we don't really need it. With vintage watch, when the when the condition is good or well, perfect, and I mean, you forget uh, the, you the, forget the, everything. You the forget tone everything of the case is is yeah. incredible, like this uh, beautiful rose. That's amazing on this one as well, but. Uh, since we talk about Patek, yeah, would you mind? Yes, we can. Of course. So I collect uh, vintage watches. I say mainly because when you see uh, the, the quality of the watches from the 40s, 50s and 60s, I mean, there is not much that can compete with it. Uh, not really. Uh, today. Uh, but I also uh, like and uh, collect some uh, modern watches. And uh, as I told you, uh, I begin with a uh, with a uh, 5110 uh, Patek uh, Patek Philippe, and I have uh, I have here like an interesting one, uh, which you have already seen on my Instagram, and you've asked about it. So now it's here for you. Ah, yes. They asked me reference. What's the thing? Why the and everything? Yeah. Why and everything? So this is a this is a 5110. Uh, Patek Philippe, so early uh, 2K years, you know, 2000, uh, 2002 or something like that. Uh, but it has a special yeah. twist because, because it has a, a prototype dial, means that uh, it's like, you know, test dials. We can see it on Patek, we see sometimes this on Rolex also, you know, the, there is some that are popping up on the market. And uh, I bought it because I think I take the, the good watch, and uh, how often you come across with a more or less a unique dial, yeah, with a unique touch, with color combination, which which is like popping uh, very out much of the, of the of the watch. So a Patek Philippe, a good Patek Philippe is a good watch. A Patek Philippe with a unique dial is a very it's, good watch. It's, it's a course. very good watch. So of and course it's confirmed in the extra and everything. It's uh, actually it's a it's a test dial, so it means okay. that it's a regular watch with a test dial. Test dial. It came from, you know, it's always a, <laughs> a, a story behind it. But what what I like about the watch is, is that you can also link with a historical part because it's a test dial, so it means that it's very very natural, very very basic. But when you look at the at the 24 hour disc, you can see like. Uh, a detail of uh, very early Louis Cotier watches because in the 30s, at the very beginning, it was only one color on okay. the 24-hour uh, ring. And then, in terms of legibility, etc., Louis Cotier asked to be two-tone to express like the two sides of the day, so day and night. So with it, you can uh, you can have like the roots, you know, of the of the basic stuff. So that's that's the story I'm telling. But in the end, amazing. How did you come across a, to uh, the watch, if we may? You cannot tell us the story of how you did acquire like, the like, watch. Like everything with the watches, I mean, it's meeting people. Yeah, knowing meeting the right people, ones. meeting uh, meeting people. Uh, Interesting. Telling the the interest you have in this, and uh, and when you meet the right people, uh, Santa Georgia. Can, uh, okay. You know that there, there, there is some that uh, pop on the market. Uh, there is uh, actually only one uh, that was really prototype. Prototype is the Aquanaut because the movement etc was an already prototype. But there is some. There is also an annual calendar sold I think in the US uh, uh, by I think Bob Marron or so, somebody like that. Uh, well, but for me, it's a uh, it's a modern amazing. Patek Philippe with a little twist and uh, actually it has a twin sister uh, uh, because a uh, white one, uh, there is two, one was uh, sold uh, at uh, Sotheby's so well, like uh, one year or two years I ago, I don't, I don't remember. And this one was like more private treaty, let's say. And 
And this is it. I prefer the black one because the black is more... It's more oh, intense. Yeah. Powerful, and intense. it's interesting because the indices look like zeros. They yeah. really look like zeros. Mm -hmm. Super interesting. And having Patek Philippe, not Geneva, but prototype is kind of a flex, I can say. <laughs> yeah. I gotta be honest with you. No, it's really, really cool. And I gotta say, it's, uh, it's the watch I've been, I've seen you wearing the most, I would say. The most, or well, recently, recently. Well, recently. Yeah. When did you acquire this one? Uh, more or less two two years ago. Okay. Like that. Okay. So why are you wearing it more often? Yeah. Uh, it uh, just feel like it. Yeah. Okay. It just feel like it. Okay. Amazing. This one is the most modern you have. The most modern I've seen. Let's yeah. Say. And uh, maybe also I don't know if the most easy to get because prototype is not easy to get at all, but. Uh, the one that I looks the most easy, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, are you looking for a next one? Yeah, the next one is... Uh, I'm looking for a good uh, 1415, but you know when you collect... Uh, when you collect wow. uh, World Time Watches uh, and when you... What like the education uh, around it, you are starting to look for specific details yeah. and not like the... Regular uh, 1415. So what are you looking for in a 1415? Ah, maybe a pink one. Okay. Maybe an early one. Maybe with a, maybe with a, like more rare, uh, you know, ends with a, like mm -hmm. list ends or button ends. Voila. Of course. And of course, good condition. As always. When you have a good Agassiz, you don't want a bad Patek because yeah. otherwise you are disappointed. Very true. So. Very true. Wow, amazing one. Tell me about the last one, which is the one I was really not expecting because I knew this other three, but yeah. this one I've never seen before. And you, you, you came to me and I was like, what is he wearing? What is it? What's that? Because we are... It's like a Seiko. <laughs> is it a Seiko? I know. And uh, because we are in Paris, and so Paris is about to... Yes. To host the, the Olympic Games. Uh, very 24. I have actually a watch that dates back to nine, 1964. Yes. It has made for the Olympic Games of Tokyo. So you can see on the case bag because the watch is Beautiful. in good condition. You have, you have the... Beautiful. Actually, I don't think it's engraved. It's like more printed, more okay. or less. Because when you wear it, it's, it wears out... A <laughs> That's why you Maybe. put the sticker. That's why of I course. put the sticker, and that's why I put I uh, I bought this one because you can see, you know the clearly yes. You can see you know the flame, the Olympic uh, beautiful torch flame, and uh, so I think the reference is six two one seven, six two one seven, and so it's a uh, it has been made for the for the Olympic Games, and it's another way to to express a world time. This one is more or less it's a um, melt between GMT yes, and, I uh, see the hand, in and fact. Uh, because the 24 hour ring doesn't, uh, doesn't oh. move. So that's more, uh, that's more a GMT uh, yes. with a way to adjust the second time zone, you know, but, uh, but I think it's, it's cool. It's uh, made on a, on a custom stride made here in Paris by uh, Camille Fournay with the Olympic colors. Of course, that's the best part I gotta <laughs> say. How did you, find this one how did you came in touch with this one because i never knew like psycho me there is a there is, is a quite, quite a, yeah there is quite a good variety of it uh, i think there's an australian guy who has a website uh, who's collecting more or less what you like as well yeah, yeah. okay and uh, and uh, so uh, i get in contact with him uh, i try to study the watch etc i i happen to to like also tokyo so that's also a, a fine uh, a fine a fine Beautiful. addition and and, and, uh, and that can also show you that you can appreciate a world time watch at cool, like so. a more affordable uh, uh, price point and i think i, I have Beautiful. the same pleasure with this with the Patek, with the Agassiz. Really? Yeah. So it's really yeah. about the world timer, huh? It's, it's about the world timer, but it's about, you know, the journey. When you discover something, when you try to understand what, what it means, and, uh, and here it is.
it's the Olympic Games. It's uh, the world meeting on uh, on oh. one uh, on one place. This one is political. Paris, Rome. Paris and Rome. Voilà. Les deux. <laughs> si, 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 si. Very political. Very political. Yes. Love it. Didn't know. I was really not expecting this one. The same. Beautiful. Door? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful conditions as well, beautiful yeah. case. I have to say it has quality in Seiko's, huh? I never would have guessed, but uh, yeah. there is of quality course. indeed. And is there any world timer in the modern era, like in our current mm -hmm. lineup? I don't know, the Frédéric Costin, I don't know. Is there anyone that you think appeals to you or will become something cool in the future? Because not many I mean... brands are doing it, huh? Nowadays, not many, but you know my my take on this is a uh, world time watches were in fashion for like 20 years and then it vanished. When you see the production of Ricotier, it's more or less 40s, 60s, uh, 50s, and in the 60s, it's it went quite uh, quite down in terms of uh, of production. Uh, why? Simply because. It's, to me, it's like poetry, you know? Mm -hmm. You had the use the full uh, use of a, of a world time uh, watch when you have like cross border, uh, you mm -hmm. know, calls. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning of, you know, the, let's say the jet age, uh, okay. with, you know, jet, um, jet plane, etc., etc. You, you don't, you don't need it anymore to have like all the cities you only need to to have the time of the city from point a to point b that's all the, the function was that so so the like the golden year of the of the complication was in 40s yeah uh, 50s but my point on that is that it can also be very interesting in the modern era because no there is no use for like watches, mechanical watches and the complication because True. no, it's more or less absolutely useless. It is. It's, it's about it's the beauty. beauty. It's about yeah. the object and, and about what the object tells you. And so with it, with every world time, you get like traveling with your on your wrist. And I think the story is a, is, a, is, a, is a modern story. And I think that uh, world time watches can be more popular now, yeah, and I hope uh, so. can and can and can become, and I, and I think so. When you look at the when when you look at the collection, I mean, look at Patek, it discontinued at the end of uh, the Cotier era, and then it came back uh, early uh, 2000. Of course. Uh, so with the modern era, and then it's it's just growing. I mean, it is. The, the, there is was there was the. 15, uh, 5110, 5130, etc. And now it's growing. You have a minute repeater plus a world time. Now you have a world time with date, etc., uh, etc. Et so I think it's getting more popular and people will come back at, uh, at world time like uh, all the old watches. Of course, uh, like the old collection. It's they better. Have, they have always uh, been on. 14, 15, 25, 23, 6 or 5. I think 6 or 5, the, the pocket watches are really great for value for what it is. Yeah. Because the condition are much better than wristwatches. Much yeah. better of because course you don't wear them. The, you don't wear them. And the, and the price point on this is very interesting. You can have a double side, a rose yeah, gold, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For much less than what for, you would pay for, in, yes. yeah, for the wrist one. And I think. Uh, world timers and repetition minutes are like the only two things you don't have on your phone. Yeah. Because you can see time everywhere in the world on your phone, but never at the same time. Yeah. And you can listen to the time on your phone, but not without, like, not every, like, Grand Sonnerie doesn't exist. Yeah. And this also has a, a, a kind of a world its own, in my opinion, but uh, I mean, you for, guys tell us. For me, it's the perfect complication. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I get you. I, I bought my first one two years ago, the Andersen Communication. Ah, yeah. Which I Sven love. Sven we can, we can talk about Sven Andersen because he's Very much one of the, 
one of the first to uh, like uh, revive the, mm -hmm. the the complication, making making the first the thinner, uh, you know, a module for a long time, etc. So it's a it's a big part of the modern story of the of the complication. But still, and today they make a lot of uh, yeah. world timers that yeah. are very very yeah. nice. Yeah. I think very it's, nice. Uh, it's very nice. If you want a perfect uh, modern watch, you can have a custom made. Uh, as Van understand uh, world time watch. What I would you buy uh, today? Like one watch that is made today in the world time range that you would buy? Maybe reasonable and unreasonable. Like ah, uh, let's begin with the unreasonable. Of course, uh, unreasonable is the it's 5531. Okay, the uh, repetition. meaning the repetition plus world time timing with the cloisonné and all that. Yes. I mean, it's an what amazing. What you watch. say? It's an amazing. It is. I think it's. I agree. Watch. And I think it's one of the best modern uh, watch. On, I agree. On the, I agree 100%. On the, on the current uh, Patek lineup, and for more reasonable, uh, yeah, I think maybe Sven Andersen. Sven Andersen is a good take. Uh, yeah, yeah, they have a quite a good variety uh, of shape. You have round. You have more or less uh, ellipse uh, watch, uh, and I think you can get some. At uh, like a reasonable price, reasonable price for what it is, independent, reviving a complication, good quality watches, good looking watches. And to those who hear us, what is the world timer you would start your collection with, in terms of quality, affordable, and everything? Is there one, maybe the Tissot, maybe I don't know something from a modern brand? If you had to start today as a collector. You restart everything and you want your first world timer. What to look for? If I restart everything, I think I will go uh, maybe with the Seiko. Why not? Yeah, why maybe. Not? Why not? I was thinking about it. Because you get the essence of the complication. Because I think uh, to begin with, it's a, it's a good take. And if you have a, a bit more of money, I would take a, a 51. Because okay, I think uh, it's like okay. the best How one. How much is it, if I may, around the market? Not easy to find, I guess, but... What? A regular one? No, it's the, the Seiko. Ah, the Seiko? Mm -hmm. uh, ah, it depends. You know, when, when I buy, I, I buy with my heart, so uh, I course, don't know if I have course. the good price. No, but, uh, but just to compare uh, it to, I never talk about I prices, think, I, really, but... I think, uh, I, think, uh, I think like uh, 1,000 is, uh, okay. is like a correct well, price uh, for the... 5110 is like 30-ish. 30-ish, yeah. 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 It depends on the material, it depends on... Honestly, the, uh, I thought of, I wanted to buy that one as my first true Patek, but yeah. uh, no. Ellipse was the way. Ah, Ellipse, well, Ellipse but is and so on. It's not, it's not a uh, well-timer. No, but, uh, but, uh, but with the shape, you know, uh, at the beginning, uh, if you see at the, at the Patek Philippe Museum, there is a, like a rectangular uh, watch with a, with a world time watch. It's, I think the reference is 542. Of course. Just check of course check, it's uh, check the reference. But, uh, I, remember, I remember. I don't know it's... if the world time really fits uh, more or less a rectangular I shape. But the uh, watch. Lorenzo knows it very well. It's an amazing watch, really. No, 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 no. Well, they've made a lot, and I, and I mm -hmm. think it's also one of the most recognizable watches. Because, yeah. at least for me, when I think about World Timer, first thing is Patek in my mind. Second yeah. is Cotier. Yeah. But to me also today, like World Timer and Patek go very well along. Yeah. And I think they should continue focusing on that because complication, kind of easy, easier to make than a perpetual calendar, than something else that's much yeah. more difficult. But still, Poetic, uh, nice to explain people how watches work, uh, how to make them useful. So I think it's really that. That's why I also wanted to interview you because I really think World Timer are kind of a save saviors of watch mm -hmm. making. Yeah. Also because come on, I want my first complication. Here it is. That's better than anything else. And when you have this on the on the on the, on your wrist. You can think of people you love across the globe and say, OK, I have a cousin in Tokyo. I what have a friend, you know, what, is, what time is it? Uh, and I mean, voila, you travel, you travel with your watch. And I think that's a it's beautiful. And that's an uh, either environmental friendly way to travel. You know? It is. It is very much no fuel involved. <laughs> no fuel involved. It's only uh, imagination. And it's the greenest. You charge it yourself with your hands uh, or yeah. with your movement. So it's uh, Perfectly fine. Do you have any other 
uh, topic or watches you want to tell me something about, or we keep it for a second episode. Uh, ah, I'll maybe, be back in Paris. Maybe, so maybe we will keep it for our next episode. But uh, when you when you speak about uh, traveling uh, with watches, you have also to you have also to to deal with uh, with pilot watches. And I also love pilot watches. Do you? I think at one point of my collection, I will also uh, do more. Which kind? Pillage. Because to me, they're very hard to collect. They're huge. Uh, ah, don't, don't know. Not, not every. If you are French, you can have a Breguet, you know, uh -huh. a Breguet, a military watch. Sure. You can have, a, I mean, I don't think of a better price point, a quality, uh, a Breitling, a Breitling Navy Timer. Get a sure. Breitling Navy Timer uh, 806, very good quality. Uh, 1964, 5, 6, okay. uh, 1970, etc. And you can have a like, perfect watch. It's a perfect watch. If the condition is good, the patina is good, it's, it's a perfect watch. Let me know just one thing. Because mm -hmm. I see you collecting the Agassi, uh, all this, and then you talk to me about Navi Timer. Mm -hmm. So you basically, you don't collect because of how it looks. You collect because of the story and, yeah. and all this. What appeals to me. Okay. And what appeals to me is uh, Plane, traveling, watches. When you melt it uh, all together, all together, you have uh, like fantastic story. Well, that's interesting. And with with uh, pilot watches, you can have uh, like the of story course. of wars, of you know, of uh, great uh, man and woman uh, discovering, uh, you know, discovering the earth, etc., etc. So, Very I important mean, important what well. else? Yeah. Thomas, Not everything is about uh, Daytona's and uh, uh, and uh, you know, and the race. We really don't. Are, well, I don't think you're into it. No. I mean, I would love Daytona, but just because of the status of the watch, and I love it, but then I would just know I own one and would be happy with it. I would be much more happy to collect this kind of watches. They have much more to give you yeah, back. Yeah, of course. Than, uh, this is it. Anyhow, thank you so much for being with me. My it was pleasure. Big pleasure. Now looking pleasure. forward to a second episode soon. Guys, Please follow the both of us, Minute de Voyage and I am Kaz, of course. Subscribe, like the video, and most important, show some love and let us know which one of these four watches was your favorite. Looking forward to the next ones, and we won't let you down. See you in the next episode. See you.